Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new episode of Echo with your host Fallen Wolf. Fallen Wolf is me, <laughs> by the way. So, we are going back into the wonderful world of... Uh, the wonderful, well, probably not the most wonderful world of Echo. Echo's not really a happy-go-lucky place, but <laughs> Echo's not a happy-go-lucky place. Let's get that out the way, first of all. It's not a very happy place. But, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, you guys seem like you really enjoy me playing Echo. Um, I've been enjoying Echo. Uh, hi, Robert. How you doing today? Hi, Robert. Do how we doing today? But, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, you guys, but I, I'm really happy in all seriousness. I'm really happy to get back into this. Um, I've been really enjoying Arches. Uh, Arches has been really good. That's supposed to be like a spinoff slash sequel kind of thing. Um, and I, yeah, in all seriousness, I really enjoy Echo a lot. I enjoy the Echo universe. So I'm excited to see where things are going to go. But, um. No, I can't really think of any. I can't really think of anything else to say. Uh, we're gonna get right into the swing of things. Um, last time I played this game, uh, last time I played Echo, uh, I we finished Leo's route. I got I, I got his normal ending and I got his bad ending, uh, which was awful. It made me very sad. I really like Leo and I was very upset by his bad ending. The good ending was pretty bad too. But um, now we're done with him. Leo has been stashed away in the corner somewhere. Um, he is stashed somewhere in some little, small, forgotten corner of Echo. So, no more Leo. And now we bring out Carl. Carl, who was pretty much not in Leo's route. But he's supposedly one of Le uh, he's supposedly one of Chase's friends, the main character. So, now we're going to see what Carl deals with. Um, and Echo, what the hell? Because Carl seemed like he's a pretty quiet guy. It just seemed like he was your basic stoner guy but um i get the feeling that the writing in this is not as any is far from ordinary so i'm really concerned about what exactly carl's hiding <laughs> uh what exactly carl's hiding and what the hell is going to happen to him but without any further ado i'm gonna start getting we're gonna get started uh load game right here so i'm gonna tell you this real quick now guys um I'm not doing the beginning all over because the beginning really has no impact on the story. If you really want to see that, you can watch the first two videos uh, of my Echo of Leo's route, which are going to be the same thing. I'm not doing the beginning because that's going to take forever, uh, and there's really no reason to. The, the point is, you, hopefully, you guys have already watched this, um, and you don't need to know the beginning. But just know that this is a group of friends, and Carl's a stoner guy, the Ram Stoner. I stand there. I stand there next to my chair, undecided. All right. So this time, instead of going with Jen and Leo, we're gonna sit with Carl. I'm tired and I feel awful. I just don't have it in me to chase everyone down right now. Fun's back off, off to Echo, and it looks like Leo went after TJ. But I can't imagine the Lynx wants all of us crowding around him right now. I sigh, rubbing my face before I sit down in the lawn chair next to Carl. He looks over at me, slowly lowering what's definitely a joint from his mouth. What? I don't mind. I make a go-on gesture with my paw. Carl shakes his head, though, pushing the disheveled two back into his front pocket. Nah, I always kind of feel like a dick when the other... I always kind of feel like a dick when the other guy isn't into it. Want me to leave? He shakes his head with a quick flick of his horns. No, man. I just do it when there's nothing else to do. Ah. There's a moment of silence, and I feel a little pressure to break it since I'm the one who interrupted his bake session. I actually tried it a few years ago. Carl looks surprised. Oh, really? How was it? I shrug. Ah, pretty bad. Was it a muffin, I think? Carl makes a face at that. Edibles. Yeah, well, I ended up eating one. Didn't feel anything for a while. Next thing you know, I'm face down on the floor and everyone's freaking out. Shit, that's... Shit, that sucks. That was kind of funny, but I don't think I'll ever try it again. Carl pulls the joint back out of his pocket and holds it up. That's why you should use one of these. It's easier on the brain. Yeah, well, I guess I just don't like the idea of putting smoke in my lungs. 
Carl puts the joint back in his pocket. I get that. Again, there's a few seconds of silence, and I try to think of something to say, but Carl beats me to it. Crazy shit, huh? I assume he's talking about what just happened. Yeah, crazy. But you know how he is. He's regretting everything right now. Well, I guess I'd rather he just wouldn't say it in the first place. What he said to TJ? Man, he picks on him a lot, but that was crossing the line. This is why Flynn sucks. I don't understand. I have people who like Flynn, and Flynn, I hate him. He's a shitbag. How do you like Flynn? Who here likes Flynn? Who here likes Flynn? Because, please, I, I, don't tell me I hate Flynn. I don't like him. I don't like TJ either, but I don't like Flynn, and I don't like TJ so far. Maybe I'll learn to like them, but my good friend was like... But um, yeah, I don't like I don't like TJ and I don't like Flynn. Screw them. Screw them. Like who? who TJ's the little Christian goody goody two shoe Christian boy, and Flynn's just an asshole. Carl scratches behind one of his horns and rubs his nose. Well, yeah, I guess I never understood that either. Making fun of TJ is like making fun of a cloud. But Flynn doesn't mean it usually. He likes TJ. I've noticed during the trip that Carl's been pretty defensive of Flynn, even though he's the butt of most of the lizard's jokes. I've seen Flynn trip Carl up and put him in several headlocks since I got here. You'd think getting older would change that, but I swear they roughhouse even more than they did before. So you and him still you and him still seem pretty close. You guys hang out a lot? Yeah, a bit. Mostly because there isn't much else to do. He's got a friend in Peyton that he hangs out with sometimes, too. So what do you guys do? I know Flynn isn't into video games at all, and Carl probably doesn't care to go clubbing every other night. He shrugs. Sometimes we go fishing. Maybe just drive around Peyton. Mostly I'm just hanging out at home, though. Playing video games? Playing video games, watching movies, cybering with a chatbot, the usual. I grin. That's sad. I would have cybered with you if I'd known you didn't have anyone. I don't know, man. That thing compiles all the fetishes of the people it's talked to. It's got my sexuality all kinds of fucked up. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Seems like no matter what I say to her, she's tied up into some warehouse, blindfolded with a few missing limbs. You underestimate my abilities. Oh, and a gender swap that comes out of nowhere halfway through. Well, while you're not sexing up a robot, you doing anything else? He chuckles. I can't exactly get around myself anymore. So I guess your parents decide against getting him a new car? Yeah, oh, look at this. He leans over and pulls out his phone. I can't help but notice this top model brand, probably around $700. But he's not showing me the phone. Instead, he presses out the screen a few times and swipes through some pictures. I swear I see an image of Flynn with his pants down mooning the camera. Carl swipes over it pretty quick, though, and now I'm looking at the image of a brand new sedan. Except the front is neatly folded up around the pole of a stop sign. I recognize the sign. I'd actually seen it right outside the convenience store, still bent at a ridiculous angle. Guess the town didn't care enough to get it fixed. The pole itself is almost embedded into the middle of the hood. Holy shit! Carl chuckles and pinches the screen, zooming in. Yeah, dropped my phone, and when it, I came back up, this freaking pole was right in front of me. Old Ben at a ridiculous angle. Guess the town didn't care enough to get a fit. Sorry, guys, hold on. Somebody's asking me for something. Carl, why were you on your phone? I don't know. When I get to the town, I don't really think anyone's going to be on the road. I sighed and noticed a big round spot on the right side of the windshield, spiderweb and slashed white. Whoa, is that... Yep. Carl knocks on his head for effect, the hollow sound that he admits seeming rather appropriate. You rely on that too much, and you really need to start wearing your seatbelt. He shrugs and puts the phone back in his pocket before leaning back in the chair and closing his eyes. 
What's the point? Uh, to not die? Happens to everyone sooner or later. Why not go get out earlier if you can? He keeps his voice light under the heavy statement. I have no idea what to say to that, so I don't. But he breaks the silence again soon enough. So, how's the PU? You see Chelsea at all? Sometimes I forget Carl went to Pueblo with me. It was only one semester, but we had a lot of fun. That's alright. I haven't seen Chelsea at all, though. It is a big school. Anyway, what's that project thing you're doing? Just a news packet about Echo, really. Kind of about how it's falling apart. Huh? I've told him this already, but Carl never remembers much. Might center it around the whole body and the mind thing that happened way back. Carl opens his eyes and looks at me. So do you need, like, history stuff? Like old books and records and stuff? Uh, yeah, if it relates. Carl sits up straighter and grins. Well, why didn't you say so? We've got a ton of stuff in the crawl space from way back when. Yeah, what kind of stuff? Carl sets a hoof against one of the rocks circling the fire pit and starts rocking his chair back. Well, whatever my family kept over the years. That one guy? Um... Carl snaps his fingers a few times. You know, the one found in this place, uh... James? Yeah, sure. He's like my great-great-great-grandfather or something. I think we still have some of that stuff from back in the day. My parents were thinking about setting it up an echo mu setting up an echo museum thing, but they never did. This might actually be useful to me. All I had planned was to maybe look over some old newspapers or town records to be done with it. Actually, seeing some old stuff up close could be pretty cool. Uh, might be a good idea, actually. Carl grins. Awesome! I always kind of wanted to look through that stuff, but the crawl space is damn creepy. He's free tonight. For the first time, Carl actually looks really excited. Oh, wait. Never mind. Flynn's taking me to a dentist appointment early in the morning. How about around 11 tomorrow? I smile. Sounds like a plan. Sweet! Whoa! Carl gives an excited kick off the rock, and as the chair is tipping back, the back legs practically snap under his weight. He's sent slamming down his rear, the chair crumbled mess under his ass. I laugh, and of course, I feel bad, but Carl just gets up with a sheepish smile, looking down at the broken vial. Oh, Leo's gonna be pissed. <laughs> oh my god, Leo. But yeah, in all seriousness, um, people told me about, like, playing this, uh, playing Echo, and they said, like, you can't play certain routes till later, or the story won't make sense. Like, I was told to play TJ's last. So I'm telling you guys now, I'm gonna be playing TJ's last, because a lot of, I was very kindly, remi kind, uh, kindly reminded that, T uh, uh, or not reminded, informed that TJ's route will not make any sense if I don't play through all the other routes. So... Probably after this route, I will probably play, probably after Carl's route, I'm going to play Jenna's? I'll do Jenna's route, Flynn, and then TJ. TJ's will be last. So, and then I'll, hopefully I'll, things will make sense to me. <sighs> I'm driving down the road alongside the lake. Carl's sitting next to me. He's in the chair that he broke. I keep telling him to wear his seatbelt, but he won't. I turn down a road I don't remember. It goes straight down towards the lake. For some reason, I can't stop. I brace myself for the impact, but I hardly feel anything. We just glide into the lake. I start trying to take off the seatbelt, but it's stuck. I look over at Carl, and he smiles before opening his door. Water rushes in, and he starts to step out. Soon, the water is over my head, and it doesn't matter that I'm an otter. Tuesday. Tone said it was a good idea to hang out with Carl today. After texting back and forth with Leo, I learned that he's actually planning a birthday party for the Ram. That's a little weird since Carl's birthday isn't for another month, but I guess it's just an excuse to have a party. Leo tells me to keep Carl distracted for the day while they go shopping for decorations and gifts. He also tells me he'll get my gift for Carl, which is fine with me. TJ's pretty bummed, though, considering it throws off his hiking plans, but Jenna promises him to at least hike half the trail. 
I'm gonna talk to him, but he's acting pretty cold towards me. Probably because I'm bailing on my promise to go with him. I drive to Carl's house because it's pretty far separated from the rest of Echo, up against the foothills of the Casa de Mano mountain range. It'd probably take me 15 minutes to get up there, and there's no way in hell I'm doing that in this heat uphill when I've got a car. The main reason it's separated like this is because Carl's house is in a mansion. Carl's family is loaded, a legacy that's followed them ever since Carl's great, great, whatever stuck it rich over 100 years ago. James Hendrix eventually went on to start an ice cream business, which at this point has spread out over most of the western half of the country. Carl's mom is the CEO, I think. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I should probably get some shots of the mansion considering its role in the town's history. Most of the old mansion has been demolished at this point, but I think parts of it are still from the original structure. Probably best to ask first, though. I woke up to the front door and rang the doorbell, listening to the fancy chime inside. I wait for about a minute, starting to wonder if Carl's asleep or just high off his ass when I hear some voices from behind the house. I'm definitely recognizing the crackly timbre of Carl's voice along with the high tenor of Flynn's. I head around the house, stepping carefully through the desert landscaping and walking into the backyard. Because <clears throat> you, wa you want to make out with him? No, because you like to make things weird. I just want it to be relaxed. That's when Carl notices me as I round the corner, clutching my camera bag to my side. He's leaning over a bush with a giant set of clippers while Flynn lounges up against the wall watching him. Whoa, Chase. Carl's ears perk up and he grins. Sorry, Flynn. Carl rolls his big head at the lizard. I was supposed to be watching for you. Flynn doesn't look at me right away, instead choosing to pull the toothpick he's chewing on out of his muzzle to look at it. He's still embarrassed about yesterday. Good. That's alright, it wasn't hard to hear you guys from the front. Yeah, uh... Just doing some yard work, obviously. He rubs behind his head. Promised my parents I'd get this done before they got back. Carl starts snipping at the bush again. He's unusually sharp right now, I guess because he hasn't had anything to smoke. Either way, it's trying to see him so animated. Well, looks like you're doing a good job. Oh, he's only moving this fast because he wants to hang out with you, Chase. Even though the sentence is technically being said to me, I feel like Flynn's directing it at Carl. Carl Ferris his brow. Chase, you can go inside if you want. The back is open. I think that's a good idea because it's clear now that I've walked in, in on an argument. You should have seen him a few minutes ago. It was like he had a girlfriend coming over. Carl sighs loudly and his snips start to get a little, start to get a bit more violent. No, I'm just glad to have some company that isn't only you, Flynn. Flynn looks annoyed, and that annoys me. He really didn't have the right to be frustrated with anyone after yesterday. Really? Always seemed to be enough for you in the past. Flynn makes a kissy face. I have no idea if this is one of their inside jokes or not. Carl stops snipping for a second and starts up again more slowly. Well, you know, lizards can be fun, but they don't have all the parts that I like, if you know what I mean. Carl smirks sideways at Flynn. Flynn sneers back, and though I've decided that they're still joking, there's definitely a growing tension between them. What you saying there, Carl? Carl stops snipping and plants the point of the clippers into the ground, leaning on it as he turns to face Flynn. What I'm saying is you've got no ball. Before Carl can finish his sentence, Flynn turns to the right away from him. This also brings his fat tail around to slam into Carl's crotch with a whap that makes me cringe. Ow! Ooh! Ow! That sounds... That's freaking painful. Next ground leading one as he turns to face Flynn. Dang, is you've got no... Bo oh, that is... Oh, that's... Ow! Ow! What the hell is wrong with Flynn? Like, why? Why, why do people like this man? Why, why do people like this man? Onagi's not here right now. I have a good friend called Onagi. He's not here right now. Onagi, why do you like this man? He's awful. I hate him. This also brings his fat... Oh, I can't. Carl jumps and squeaks before toppling to the ground. Oh, man, my nuts! Yeah, definitely wish I had those all dangly and vulnerable and shit. Anyway, I'll leave you two sluts alone. Flynn sticks the toothpick back into his muzzle, and I have to consciously try not to cover my crotch while he walks by me. He hasn't looked at me this whole time. Once Flynn's gone, I settle up to Carl, who's still curled up on the ground, holding himself while he mutters under his breath. Uh, 
Are you alright? Fuck no. Um not really anything I can do, so I rub his shoulder with a toe comfortably, and he freezes up as I do looking at my foot. Uh, I'm alright though. He gets himself into a sitting position before he gets up awkwardly, standing bow legged. I forgot how much Flynn likes to hit people in the nuts. I'll get him back. It still hurts him if you hit hard enough. As he stands there doubled over with his paws on his knees, I look around. Carl's house has actual grass in the back, which is rare in Echo. Most people either have Zyra escape or just let the sagebrush take over. Another rarity are the two tall trees on either side of the yard. That's when I notice how empty one of them looks. Hey, where'd the treehouse go? Carl follows my gaze. Oh yeah, my dad took it down a few years ago. It was falling apart. His dad also built the treehouse. I can remember hanging out up there, playing on our portable game consoles with a fan at full blast. Even then, it was still almost too hot to hang out up there. I walk up to the base of the tree and put my hand against the trunk, grinning. Man, remember all the shit we did up there? Carl shuffles up next to me, still bow-legged, and grins too. Yeah, good times. I think about climbing it, but I notice that the branch we used to use as a foothold has been cut off. Your dad ruined this thing. Carl scrapes at the spot where the branch used to be with a hoof. Yeah, I guess it made the mowing harder. And we didn't use it anymore, so we just cut it off. I can see Carl looking for a way up too, and soon enough his eyes settle on a branch just above his head. I don't know if Carl's already jumping to grab onto the branch with both paws. It doesn't look very sturdy. Dude, that's gonna break. So? I'm fucking fat. I'll bounce. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love Carl. Oh, Carl's so great. <laughs> so, so good. God, I, I'm gonna save that. I gotta save that real quick. Okay, we saved that. <laughs> Ooh! Oh, hey guys! It's it's the super popular thumbnail that everybody that everybody and their mother uses. Everybody and their mother uses for Carl's route, but it's fine. It's a good one. I like it. I'm fine with it. For oh, oh, hey guys! It's. It's the super popular thumbnail. Like, uh, so many people use this and I love it. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good, guys. Just, just, I just don't want you guys to, like, inhale. Like, no motorboating, not motorboating. That's different. Just inhale the look of this beautiful CG. The art is so good. Also, the art. I love the, I love the CG art in this, uh, in, in Echo so much. It's so good. It's so good. I love it. Ugh, I love it. Mm, 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 mm. All right, moving on. I'm moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Moving on. We're not here to be horny. I'm about. <clears throat> I'm about to tell him again that the branch is definitely gonna break when I notice his shirt riding up all the way over his round belly. It's not like he's a bag of lard though. It's a control type of gut held tight with the muscles underneath, pulling it in as he flexes. He notices me staring right away and kicks out at me playfully. <laughs> Pervert, first my moves and now this. I jump back and he tries to follow me with a bigger swing of his legs and that's when the branch snaps loudly. Carl goes down once again landing squarely on his back. Oof. I cover my face instinctively but I still hear the hollow thud followed by the whoosh of breath going out of his lungs. Slowly, I lower my paws and find the chubby ram rolling back and forth on the ground, eyes wide as his mouth hanging open. A distant memory comes to mind of a time when we were both ten and Carl was showing me a trick of his new bike ramp. The handlebars ended up in his gut when he landed and he spent the following minute rolling around the ground just like this. Good times. Shit. I suck in air through my teeth and kneel next to him again, patting him uselessly. After a few seconds of hesitation, I reach over and grab the front of the waistband of his shorts and pull up on it. Even though he's completely deflated, he looks at me with a bizarre expression and swats at my paw, giving a few breathless snorts as he tries to laugh. 
Hey, it's supposed to help you breathe. I've seen the coaches do it at school. I'm realizing that Carl's way too heavy to arch up like that, so I give up and end up just petting his stomach, wishing I could help somehow. Just, just stretch out. His breath is already coming back, but he follows my instructions anyway, and we sit there for a while, the silence punctuated by his heavy breathing. I start laughing. Jesus Christ, Carl, can you go one day without hurting yourself? He chuckles too, his belly shaking under my paw. Now you know why I don't go outside. Ugh. He slumps back for a while, taking in deep breaths before lifting his head again. He looks down his chest at my paw and grins. Seems like you can't keep your paws off me, though. I move my paw, letting him pull down his shirt as he grunts and sits up. How about I just let you suffocate next time? I almost did, laughing while I couldn't breathe. I thought you were trying to grab my dick. I put my paws on my hips. Is it because I'm gay? That might just be it. Carl grabs the branch that had broken off the tree and quirks up the corner of his mouth. Ugh, Dad's not going to be happy about that. Who cares? It's just a branch. You know my dad. He gets up and tosses the branch over the fence into the desert, then turns back to me. So now that it feels like Lucha fucking Lobo just gave me the Quapodoro Congiro, I think I'm done for the day. Want to work on your project now? I'd honestly rather just hang out here with Carl, but the sun's enough to put a damper on that. Carl's house is like a labyrinth. I think he once told me that it has over 30 rooms, which is fucking insane. The living room is about five times larger than the one in my parents' house, and it's hard to miss what looks like a 100-inch flat screen against the wall. According to Carl, the first mansion was even bigger, though. After getting a drink, he leads me straight downstairs into the basement. Down the hallway, we pass a small home theater that looks like an entertainment room for bar and then a small gym. The quick glance I get shows at least 10 fitness contraptions. After that, things get a little more dingy, and I can see how portions of the foundation could be decades old. Finally, at the end of the hall, Carl opens the door, and I can see from the ceiling that it's right under the stairs we came down on. Carl waves his paw around and finally grasps something before pulling down. An old light bulb comes on, and I see there's a little door with a small latch on it. He opens it, and I'm greeted with a musty smell as Carl slides through the opening. I follow tentatively, making sure I'm not walking into any cobwebs. Are there a lot of are there a lot of spiders down here? I don't think so. We sprayed a few weeks ago. It's extremely dark, and I hear Carl grunting next to me. Ugh, there's a floodlight here somewhere. Ah, here it is. Like everything in the house, it's big It's big for a crawl space. Pillars sprout from the ground in two rows that stretch back almost into darkness. The ground is covered in a tarp, and I see dozens of plastic bins lining the walls. This is a lot of shit. Yep, it's a few generations worth of shit. I walk over the tarp to look into one of the bins, but all I can see is clumps of cloth and towels through the cloudy plastic. Carl walks past me straight towards the back of the crawl space, his big hooves clopping along loudly. I actually helped them sort through all this stuff last year, so I think I know where it is. I follow him, but it's hard to see in the darkness. Should we get a flashlight? No, it's only in two tubes. Tubs. Tubes. Tubs, I think. We'll just pull them to the front. I stand off to the side as I watch him push bins around, looking at the labels on top. I look over at one of them and see home movies written on it, and it's filled with cassettes. Ugh, don't remind me. I look up and see that Carl's noticed me staring at the bin. What? Carl grunts as he lifts up a bin and drops it pretty carelessly to the floor. I'm pretty sure I hear something break. Mom had me help her convert all that to digital. Took all fucking year. Oh, hey, Rosie. How you doing? Oh, I just noticed you. I miss you, Rosie. I'm doing good. How are you doing? Got a panda in the group. <clears throat> wow. Yeah, it's in the clouds now. You're actually in a lot of those videos. Huh? Really? 
Yeah, birthday parties and shit. Of course I would be. Carl's dad practically had a video camera glued to his eye back in the day. I used to hang out with Carl almost as much as I did Leo once we started going out. I even went on their family vacation a few times. But then me going out with Leo changed things. Looking back, I think Carl was kind of unhappy with that. We can watch a few once we're done here if you want. Uh, sure. That sounds like an old person thing to do, but I am curious. Found it! Carl slides out two plastic bins and I see history written on the top. Help me carry one. Carl lifts up the top one and starts waddling back to the front. I bend over and lift the second one, and I'm surprised at how fucking heavy it is. I'm worried I'm not even going to get it off the ground for a few seconds, but I manage after a while. If Carl's been as heavy as mine, then he's a fucking beast to being able to lift and carry it like that. I stagger after him, almost certain that I'm going to go head first into the wall. Once we make it back near the stairs, I bend over to set my bin down, and that's when I see a massive spider sitting on the lid. Oh no. It takes about half a second for me to recognize the black shape and spindly legs. Oh fuck! I scream and drop the bin, and before I know it, I'm halfway back from where we came, panting and shivering. Holy shit, what happened? I tremble and try to study my voice. A f fucking spider! What? You're really still scared of those? Man, for a second, I thought my sister came home and they got murdered. You told me there weren't any. I didn't say that. I just said we sprayed. Just get rid of it. At this point, I'm, I've shuffled a little closer back to the light, and I can see Carl grinning as he bends over to look at the lid of the bin. Oh, it's got babies on its back. My body gives a violent involuntarily spasm, and I shake my paws like a fucking girl. Stop it! He glances up at me with that stupid smile still on his face. Well, that was gay. But seriously, it's got a bunch of tidy babies on its back. I think it's a wolf spider. I swear I'm going to pass the hell out if he doesn't stop talking. I cover my face. Please! All right, all right. I didn't know that you were that scared of him. You should probably get that checked out. Considering that I'd almost crashed my car into the garage of my parents' house when a spider crawled out of the AC, he was probably right. <laughs> Just kill it! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so scared. Why would I do that? I watch as he tilts the bin sideways. It's not going to hurt anyone. I want to tell him that those babies are only going to grow into a hundred more giant wolf spiders. But... I well, Rosie, you can always hit me up any time. My, uh, my Twitter is always available. Twitter. Yeah, Twitter. Yeah, Twitter. Okay. Uh, yeah, my Twitter is available at any time. You can always hit me up there. Sorry, guys. I keep getting distracted. I'm going to be streaming for you guys. I feel real bad. I'm going to be streaming for you guys. My friends keep posting silly crap. <clears throat> uh, but I realize I'll just come off as a bloodthirsty asshole, so I bite my lip as I watch the black spot skitter off into the darkness. I walk back towards Carl, hugging my shoulders as I try to control the chills running through me. Now I'm going to be paranoid the whole time that it's going to come back out to get me. Carl rubs my back when I stand next to him. You know, they actually clean up a lot of other bugs that get into the house. Yeah, well, I'd rather be covered in ants than spiders. It's clear he's trying not to laugh at me as he starts popping the lid off his bin. Yeah, I hate spiders too, in all seriousness. Fuck spiders. Get yeah, Spider-Man is my favorite, um... Yet Spider-Man is my favorite superhero, so uh, try to figure that one out, guys. On the top are a few framed pictures, and under those are a few more cardboard boxes. I realize the latch is on the other bin, keeping I released the latch is on the other bin, keeping my eye out for any black spots that might jump out at me. This one is filled with bundles wrapped in cloth or paper. Carl drags his bin to the steps so that he can sit on them, and I follow suit. So, how do you think you'll use this stuff? Um, I unwrap a smaller bundle and look at the gold pocket watch underneath. Wow, wow. Uh, well, 
not totally sure. Depends on what we find. Might film a few things. There's a paper tag attached to the chain with Robert Hendricks written on it. Who's this? Carl gives it a glance. No idea. Probably a great uncle or something. I wrap the pocket watch and reach back into the bin to pull out the next item. There's something really cool about old stuff. My mind wanders to who might have made it, who bought it, and how much shit it might, might have, ugh, must have seen. History was my first choice to major in, but Dad put a stop to that pretty quick. I pull out various other things, dolls, pipe, coins, and another pocket watch. I feel like this is worth a lot of money. Why don't they sell it? Probably, but it's family stuff, and I still think they want to do the museum. He gets an awkward cough. <laughs> Besides, we already got plenty of money. He's got the binder open, looking at black and white photos behind the plastic. Hey, this is him, right? He points at a picture of a very dignified-looking ram, thumbs in his vest, wearing one of those big top hats. A fox stands next to him in a similar pose. I can see a piece of yellowed paper set behind the photo and tug it out. James Hendricks. Yep, definitely him. And John Baggy? Be gay? Huh? That's Jenna's last name. Carl's phone starts buzzing and he grunts as he leans back to pull it out of his pocket. Hey, Mom. Helping Chase with his project. No, I... Of course not. I look over at him, but he gets up and claps back up the clops back up the steps. Looking back down at the picture, I wonder if it's just coincidence, but I don't think so. Jenna's family has been an echo since the beginning. Sue, so this guy definitely has to be a relative of some guy. I take a picture of the photograph on my phone. I'll show it to Jenna later and ask if she knows anything about it. To do... Th to do that without a car? Carl raised his voice so I looked back up the steps, wondering if I should close the door. Hearing him angry like that didn't feel right. His parents were always hard on him, but I guess they had their reasons. I spend the next 20 minutes shuffling through the bins, trying to be careful not to break anything. I decide I have enough and put the lids back on the bins, lining the stuff I picked out along one of the steps since I don't have anywhere else to put them. By the time I head back up into the actual basement, Carl's gone. As I approach Carl's room, I smell it before I even open the door. He's reclined on his bed, an arm thrown over his face, the big window above him open. Clothes are scattered all over the floor along with a few empty water bottles and bowls. Every inch of the walls are covered in posters like I remember, along with a few on the ceiling. Bookcases line the opposite wall, filled to the brim with comics and toys. It raises up his arm as I walk in and smiles. Sorry about the mess, dude. It's hard to keep everything clean when my parents aren't here to yell at me about it. The lazy, crackly sound in his voice has returned full force. His eyes are distant. It's okay. Are you okay? He grins toothly. Dude, I'm more than okay. Since there's nowhere else to sit, I end up sitting down on the foot of his bed. Do they... Do they let you smoke in here? The smell in his room is layered and old, like the walls have been blanketed in the smell several times before. Yep, they gave up trying to stop me. Better to be in the house rather than getting caught by some cop outside. They just made me promise that I would never try anything, something harder. <laughs> Good thing they don't know I've already tried dick. <laughs> oh my god, Carl, shut up. Carl, shut the hell up. Oh my gosh, Carl's, Carl's a mess. I, I like I like Carl. I'm liking Carl. Carl's pretty funny. I also feel like he has issues. It's gonna be a very interesting game to play. <sighs> he puts a lot of emphasis on the K as the bad joke seems to just dribble out his muzzle. Hmm. I lean back on the bed and that's when I notice his flat screen, which is a 48 inches on. A list of video files displayed on it. What well, you watching? Oh, oh! Carl grunts as he sits up and reaches for a game controller. Our old home movies. I was going to show you some of them. How about a birthday? Sure. He scrolls down the list and stops when Carl's ace is highlighted and presses play. 
The backyard I was in an hour earlier pops up on the screen. Now a long table sits in the middle of the lawn along with a massive bounce house. And not just any bounce house, but a giant two-story one you'd find at the state fair. The video is timestamped April 19, 2002. Fuck, I remember this. There are about 20 kids, mostly in the bounce house, and most of whom I've forgotten. Right now, though, the camera's zooming in on an 8-year-old Carl. He's messing with a giant Nerf gun, the kind that no kid ever gets because they're so damn expensive. And that's when 8-year-old me enters the picture, holding a much smaller Nerf gun. His parents gave everyone a goodie bag that day, and had toys in it that I might not even be able to get on my own birthday. My kid self puts the gun to Carl's head and pulls the trigger, the dart bouncing off of one of his horns. I specifically remember that moment. I thought the suction of the dart was going to stick, but of course it didn't. The audio was filled with a deep chuckle, Carl's dad behind the camera. You were a dick back then. What? I was eight. Still, you blew up my candles. Oh yeah. He got so mad about that. I start to settle back and smile. It's been a long time since I've watched the whole movie and I've forgotten how nice it is to have this method of looking back. Kind of like when I get stuck on scrolling through all the old images on my phone. My younger self is trying to help Carl with the gun, lifting up the barrel and looking into the opening. Careful. Kid Chase pulls his head back with a jolt as Carl's dad yells and mutters behind the camera. See how long it takes him to trick Carl into trading with him. Carl's dad sounds exasperated, but good natured. Still makes me blush a bit, now knowing how aware James Jim was of my taking advantage of his son. The struggles with the Nerf gun gets the attention of another kid, though. My breath catches in my throat as Sydney bounces in a frame. I can feel Carl tensing up next to me too and he starts to lean for the game controller. And here comes the Mormon boy. Oh, wait. Oh, and here comes the Mormon boy. Oh. The disgust in Carl's dad's voice shocks me and I hear Carl whisper a curse to me as he fumbles for the controller. Cindy reaches out and pulls the gun away from Carl as he looks it over, grinning. Hey! Suddenly the screen switches back to the file, man. We both sit there and silence for a few seconds. Sorry, I, I guess I forgot that. He said that cursed Mormon boy. Wait, is Carl's dad racist? Would that be? I don't know. If you don't like somebody for their religion, what would that be? Cons would that be considered racist? No, right? Yes. Huh. You know, that's a good question. I don't know what that would be considered. It's not good, though. Regardless, it's not good, I'm assuming. I don't know. Anyway, moving on, guys. We didn't come here for that. Of course, Sydney was going to be at that party, but I'd honestly forgotten, too. If there was any way to perfectly ruin the mood, that had been it. I glance over at Carl and see him looking down at the gamepad, ears lower, the inside's red. Hey, it's okay. I mean, maybe it's a good thing to watch. My dad. I didn't know he'd say that. I'd rather not find out what else he said. Oh, yeah. I look around trying to find something, anything to distract us from what just happened. My eyes fall on the shelves holding Carl's game library. Wanna play a game? It's just like old times as we co-op through Winter Castle. The fact that he still has the old save files from when he was in college makes it all the more nostalgic. I get so into it that it gets dark outside without me even knowing, and pretty soon I'm looking out at the purple sky reluctantly. About time I go back. Carl sighs and pauses the game before stretching and dropping the controller onto his bed. Oh, come on. Sure you can't stick around? I don't know. I don't have any clothes or toothbrush. We can walk over and get them. Carl seems pretty determined to make me stay, and there's not reason why I can't, so I relent. Alright, yeah. This could be fun. Yes! Carl looks happy and almost relieved. It'll be just like old times. He rolls to his hooves. And speaking of old times, let's make a pizza! I've suddenly caught Carl's enthusiasm. We go into the massive kitchen and pull out a big frozen pizza from the fridge, and while it bakes, we sit at the counter and talk. At this point, the hazel pot is lifted from Carl's face, and he's animated and excited again, swiveling on one of the counter stools. For the first time in almost ten years, I'm giddy and excited in the way you only get when you're at a sleepover. 
Makes it a little jarring when he pulls out some beers, but I'm happy to have a few when we guzzle them down as we talk about past sleepover. Pretty soon our reminiscing drifts into the present, and that's when the conversation slows a bit, Carl having less to say. I try to change the subject and tell him that he should come back to school. He just smiles and shakes his head. Three hours later, we're both lying back on Carl's bed head to toe, having just watched a shitty action movie. We didn't end up going out to get my stuff, so I'm just in my boxes, pleasantly drowsy and buzzed. I hear Carl snuffle and look down my chest at him. What's up? He looks over at me and shrugs. Ooh, guys, he's in his boxers. Oh, he looks great. Guys, he looks so good. Oh boy. Nothing, just thinking. What about? During our past sleepovers, Carl had always been afraid to be the last to fall asleep. He'd try to keep me up by talking, rolling over on top of me, and sometimes by just throwing shit at me. I wonder if that's what he's doing now. I don't know. Life? That's a lot to think about. Not for me. <laughs> I look over at him again. He's holding one paw up, looking through his fingers at the ceiling fan. He's just figuring things out. Carl lets his arm flop back down over his head, blowing out a sigh. I'm not figuring things out, man. I don't say anything. It's cool that he's reaching out to me, but I'm not sure I can offer any advice that he hasn't heard before. I just... I just wish I could be doing something. Ooh, Carl, I feel that so much. Like, in all seriousness, I really relate to that. I really relate to that. Hmm. For you guys that don't know, I am currently on a leave of absence from my job. I'm currently on a leave of absence from my job for, uh, for reasons, for issues. And I don't know when I'm coming back. I don't know if I'm coming back, to be blunt. And um, I really wonder what I'm going to do with my life. So I completely understand where Carl's coming from. Trying to rationalize your place in the world is not a fun feeling. And sometimes it can't be helped. Especially when your friends are doing a lot of things. Anyway. Moving on. I, I think for a moment... You've done a lot more than some people I know. I mean, your art is great. You did go to school even if you dropped out and you were working while you could. There are a lot of people out there who can't even say that. Carl laughs, but it's a sad kind of laugh. <laughs> Try saying that to my mom. She's always got something to do, always wants to do something. Oh, I know that feeling. I just, I just don't feel that. He turns his head towards me. I wish I did, Chase, but I just can't. I like this soundtrack, too. His voice catches in his throat, and I shrink a, a bit into the bed and pretend not to notice. The beer we've had is definitely partly to blame. The, the, the beer we've had is definitely partly to blame for this. He turns his head towards the wall, though, and I'm guiltily relieved that when he talks again, his voice is under control. I just wish it wasn't such a goddamn chore for me to just go outside, you know? I didn't know, but I nod anyway, even if he can't see. He's waiting for me to say something, though, so I clear my throat. Ooh, I don't like this. Oh, no. I don't know what to say. Should I tell him he has a problem? Is he gonna... Oh, I don't know. Hmm. What choice do I make, guys? I feel like we should be supportive. But I don't know. Is that bad? Is it like Leo's route and it's gonna give me a bad ending? Hmm. Hmm. I 
I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna try to be supportive. I guess I'm gonna try to be supportive. I don't know. It's fine. You know, Carl, some people are just like that. He looks down at me but doesn't say anything. If it's so hard to get out, then just don't. People figure people figure things out eventually, and if you always just wanna stay home, then do that. Just uh try to figure out a way to sustain yourself. That's pretty much a gist gist of what my therapist told me. Do what makes you happy. He watches me for a few seconds. So was all that was all those problems you had taken care of now? I hope so. We lay in silence for a little while before I finally speak up. Listen, I'll probably come I'll probably come back a few times this week to work with that history stuff. Well, why don't we go out and do something? That would be nice. I grin glad at making Carl feel better. Cool, so let's plan on it. Carl puts his paw behind his head and smiles. It's cool that you're here, Chase. It's cool to be here, Carl. And not just because it's nice to have someone to talk to. Oh? No, this house is fucking haunted. Wait, you can't- No, you can't transition to that. What? No, what, what do you mean this house is haunted? Is that where we're gonna stop one? Uh, okay. That was really bizarre. We just gonna- We're just gonna- keep, We're just gonna stop there. Okay. Alright, that's fine. We're just, just gonna stop there, I guess. Transition to that. What? No, what, what do you mean this house is haunted? Is that where we're gonna stop one? Alright, whatever. Moving on. I guess. No big deal. Oh, boy. Anyway. I don't remember falling asleep, but it's at that moment that something wakes me up. I jolt, then lie there, trying to remember where I am. Carl's house, that's right. I stare at the ceiling, wondering what time it is. I don't bother to look at my phone, though, because I'm already starting to fall back asleep. A scraping noise from beneath me makes me jump, and I prop myself up on my elbows, listening. Looking over, I see Carl's... I see Carl's staring at the ceiling, eyes wide. Carl? I whispered, and I'm not sure why. He jumps and looks at me confused like he'd just woken up. Huh? Are you okay? Yeah, what's wrong? I, I think I hear something. His floppy ears perk up. I don't. Then his eyes widen. Although I didn't hear anything right then, he definitely did. You hear it? Yeah, like a scraping noise I told you about. Yeah. He looks happy. Huh, <laughs> so I'm not fucking crazy. We both sit there and listen for a while, but it sounds like it stopped. Wanna go see what? Suddenly his eyes widen and his muzzle drops open in shock. I stare back. What? Did you fucking hear that? I listen, feeling my heartbeat pick up now that Carl looks fucking terrified, but I don't hear anything. What? A fucking voice! The fur raises up all over my body as I listen. But nothing. Carl definitely seems convinced though, so I listen harder. I just start to make out what might be a voice when Carl sits up next to me and gets out of bed. I feel myself start to panic. Does some crazy hobo break into the house? Carl gets off the couch. Come on! What? What the fuck are we gonna do? Let's call the cops! No, let's make sure first. This has happened before. What What do you mean? He puts a finger up to his lips. Grab something. What? I follow Carl out into the kitchen and he starts rummaging through the drawers. I follow him, hugging my shoulders, feeling a lot colder right now. With the sound of metal sliding against metal, Carl pulls out a giant steak knife. What the fuck? Dude, I've been hearing this shit for the past month, and I've been too scared to go down there, but now with you here... He flashes me a smile. I'm gonna find out what the fuck this is. Here. He reaches into a spot between the fridge and the wall and pulls out a broom before sticking it out to me. I take it slowly. What the hell am I supposed to do with this? Hit him, come on! Carl starts down the stairs and I follow behind, holding the broom stick in front of me like a sword. I've never had to hit anyone with a stick before. I have no idea what I'm doing. 
Once we get to the small door leading down to the crawl space, Carl pauses and we both listen. It's silent for a while then. Shit! Carl looks at me like I'm crazy, not reacting to the noise at all. Shh! He leans down upon the handle. Looking back at me, he signals me with his eyes to be ready. I grip onto the broom like a lifeline as I wait for him to swing the door open, and when he does... Darkness. Shit! So whatever's down here is just slinking around in complete darkness? Hey! Carl says it unconvincingly, the fear clear in his voice. Then after looking back at me... Fuck it! He jumps down into the crawl space, disappearing into the dark. Carl! I stumble up to the edge of the steps, trying to squint into the black. I hear Carl to the right, rustling around, cursing. That's when lights flood the crawl space. I quickly wobble down the steps, knowing that if whatever is down there is going to try to escape, it would be running right into me. Finally, I have a moment to catch my breath, standing several feet behind Carl as I look around, broom at the ready. There's nothing here. What the fuck? Sure enough, the crawl space looks empty. There aren't many places to hide, either. What the hell's going on, Carl? But he doesn't answer me. He's staring at the pins. Did you put the pins back? I look down and the pins are gone. I look back at where they were originally and sure enough, they're neatly stacked right where we found them. I... I honestly don't remember. Did I move them back? Maybe it would be something I might do. I, I try, but I just can't remember. Maybe? Oh, this is not good, guys. It's not good. They're gonna die. I don't like this. They're gonna die. It's not a good thing. Anyway. Dude, come on. I really don't remember. Carl walks further towards the back, ears perked, looking left and right as he clutches his knife. I start to follow, but that's when I notice something at the left of my vision on the ground. Looking down, I see something fat and hairy ambling slowly over the tarp. A giant fucking tarantula! The following few moments are a blur, but the next thing I know, I'm going up the stairs on my feet and Paul's grabbing at the door frame to pull myself up. Chase, what happened? I can hear him running up behind me, so I turn to warn him. Look out! A big, a big spider! The breath keeps catching in my throat. I think I'm hyperventilating. I'm still clutching at the door frame as Carl falls up behind me, his eyes wide. Whoa, come on, Chase. This is crazy. No huge uh, a blonde. No fucking way. Nebby looks excited and he turns back to the crawl space. I feel numb right now. It's all too much to handle. What the fuck is even going on? Which way? Shakily, I point towards where the spider was crawling. Carl squints and walks down the steps, looking around. Careful! If it was really a blonde... That... If, it really, if it was really a blonde, there's not much to worry about. I hear they're actually pretty gentle. I gulp and don't say anything. My head is pounding and buzzing, which for some reason doesn't exactly feel like it has anything to do. <laughs> My head is pounding and buzzing, which for some reason doesn't exactly feel like it has anything to do with the adrenaline rush. It's more like a bad headache. Carl looks around a while longer while I focus on the steps, making sure nothing starts crawling up them. I don't even care about the possible hobo anymore. Finally, Carl comes back looking confused. Well, there's nothing there. You know, sometimes I see shit when I'm really tired. When I go back upstairs, there's nothing there. This can't be happening again. What do you mean again? Oh. Wednesday. What the? Wait, what do you mean again? He said this can't be happening again. Oh, jeez. He said this can't be happening again. Does he? Is he talk? Is is Chase talking about?
Is Chase talking about? Oh, jeez. He said this can't be happening again. I don't know. I don't know. I I I I keep trying to think of things, and I'm like, I can't really and say anything. No, I am currently on a leave of absence from my job. Yeah, dude, can you start making a suction for your family and other life? Huh. Anyway, I open my eyes slowly. The pressure in my head tells me I didn't get nearly enough sleep. Not really a surprise considering we were both up until 3. And our own ghost adventure a few hours later didn't help things. I hear the doorbell and realize that's what had woken me up. Groaning, I reach under my pillow and feel around for a few seconds before I find my phone. The lump that is Carl under the blankets near my feet doesn't even budge. That was the coolest thing about having Carl as a roommate. He slept like a fucking rock. I did pretty much anything I wanted to and didn't have to worry about him reporting me to the RA. Even something even something like jerking off. That only happened a few times, though. The rabbit I'm rooming with now is a different story. Again, the doorbell. I glance at my phone. 10 a.m. I also notice I have five texts and two calls. Ooh, it's Leo. Leo, hey. Sorry, hey. On way to Carl's house for surprise party. Make sure you're ready. Hello? That sounds like the reverse of a surprise party. I look down to nudge some part of Carl with my foot, judging by the thickness and consistency. I'm pretty sure it's his ass. He grunts. What? I think someone's at the door. He doesn't say anything, and a few seconds later, his girdle snores start up again. This time, I really dig my foot in, in and he yelps loudly, sitting up so fast his horns bang against the wall. He squints. He squints against the sunlight pouring in between the blinds, which turn his emerald eyes into an almost mint green. He raises up a paw to block the light and looks at me, frowning. What the hell was that? The doorbell goes off again. Door? Carl blinks at me, then slumps back down on his pillow, waving a paw lazily in the air. Let it ring. They'll go away eventually. Huh? Are you sure? He flops his paw around again. Solicitor, trust me. They see this house and make a beeline. No one else visits. I sigh, looking back down at my phone. Oh, look, Leo texted me. That's probably him at the door. I guess my tone of surprise is a little too fake because Carl sits up and eyes me suspiciously. Well, you can go ahead and answer it. You're allowed to touch my door. I sigh a little harder this time. Damn it, Carl, fine. They're planning a surprise birthday party for you, so go down there, answer the door, and act surprised. <laughs> Chase, what the hell? Chase, oh my god. Chase, you idiot. Oh my god, I hate Chase so much right now. a lot to think about. I quickly wobble down the street and feel around for a few seconds before I find my phone. What the f What the fuck, Chase? Why would you ruin that? What? But Carl's not just confused. He looks genuinely upset. He leans in the, to the corner and pulls up the blanket like he's preparing to ward off the boogeyman. My birthday isn't until next month. I pause watching him. I know, but we didn't have much to do, so Leo thought. I slide off the bed and start pulling on my jeans and a shirt. Come on, I'll go down with you. Carl covers his face and rubs hard, the short fur on his muscle, muzzle bristling out in little spikes around his fingers. I just wanted to relax today. No? Isn't that every day for you? I laugh to lighten the jab, but Carl just frowns. Well, not with you. I'm starting to wonder if all of this isolation is worse than Carl's issues, if he really has gotten help he needs. That all of this hiding out has just blanketed the problem and let it fester underneath. We can relax. We're all friends here, Carl. Come on. I pick up his clothes left on the floor from yesterday and toss them at him. I'm at least relieved to see him putting them on, even if it's reluctant. My phone buzzes a few more times, but I ignore it and patiently wait for Carl to finish getting dressed. I think this will be a lot of fun. He doesn't say anything as he slowly rolls off the bed and pulls on his shorts. Surprise! Happy not really your birthday, bitch! As they open the door, a blast of confetti hits my face and love a loud pop that leaves my ears ringing. Oh, it's Jenna. I know. I would. Well, no, that's not true. We did see Jenna at the end of Leo's route. She showed up. Mm -mm -mm. <coughs> T T 
TJ not in the face. Sorry. I slowly pulled the papery string of the confetti off from around my ears as the smell of fireworks stings my nose. Where the fuck's Carl? I look behind me and step over to the side a bit, revealing Carl who's got his arms folded tightly, head dipped. Good thing I didn't answer the door, huh? <laughs> happy birth, happy birthday. Oh, it's Leo! It's Leo, guys! That's the best Echo Boy! It's Leo! Oh, it's Leo! I love Leo. Leo's the best boy, and, and I have to fight with people. I have to claw tooth and nail to remind people that Leo is the best Echo Boy. Most of us agree that he is the best one. And we will fight over this until Echo the Echoverse has ended. The lump that is Carl under the blankets near my... Oh, he's so good. Happy, happy birthday. Leo bustles in carrying two bags. Jenna follows carrying medium-sized cylindrillic cake covered in white frosting. Kind of perks a bit when he sees this, his long ears bouncing. Hey, is that red velvet? Yeah, Flynn says it's your favorite store made, though. I would have made it myself if Leo had warned us in advance. Hey, I just came up with a like two days ago. Flynn engages Carl with some fake punches while Leo sets the bags down on the table before turning to me with his voice low. Just so you know, your gift is a horn band. Okay, so is everything alright with Flynn, I mean? Leo glances over at the lizard, kirking the corner of his mouth up towards his ear. Yeah, yeah, I think so. It won't take a bit of time for him to settle down, but he already sort of apologized while you were gone. So that's a start, at least. Yeah. I exhale. Okay. Car Carl, where are your plates? The... The cupboard, second door over. <clears throat> now that Flynn's not shoving him around, Carl's standing awkwardly next to the table, paused fidgeting. So, why are we doing this? It's not until next month. Leo shrugs, frowning. We just wanted to do we just wanted to do something, really. I mean there's not much to do, you know. You have candles anywhere, Carl? Uh no. No, I don't think so. What's up, man? Haven't had your morning joint yet? Lighten up. Flynn snatches up one of Carl's horns and wobbles his head around. It's something Flynn did to Carl a lot. The taboo act of grabbing someone's horn almost makes me gasp out loud. Stop! Carl shoves Flynn off and smooths his beanie down. Well, I guess we'll have to skip the candles. I told you we should have brought some Leo. Leo throws his arms out in a shrug. What? Sue me if I thought they'd have everything we need in this mansion. No kidding. You know how places you haven't been to since you were li little look smaller when you visit as an adult? TJ's eyes scan the tall ceiling. This place still just looks giant. <laughs> sure, Teach. Carl huffs out of breath. Why didn't you guys tell me? I still need to take a shower. Quit being a pussy. You always smell like skunk. Now eat some cake. Flynn grabs up the knife while Jenna sets out the plates. The frosting is so thick it practically absorbs the knife. I haven't had cake before breakfast since, like, your last birthday party, Carl. Carl doesn't say anything, instead sitting at the end of the table, paws in his pockets. The guys sure slept in. What were you doing all night? I wait to see if Carl's gonna say anything. When it's clear he isn't, I chime in. Video games mostly, in a movie. Fun, fun. Something we could have all done together, though. I'm sorry, Leo! Forgive me! We played your route, though! I'm sorry! I, I already played your route, though. It's too late now. <sighs> Maybe for people who don't have a job to go to the next day. I don't think that was a personal dig at Carl, but I don't miss the downward flick of his ears. Flynn plops down a thick slice of cake on Carl's plate, the inch deep frosting making a splatting sound. <laughs> Maybe we should just stick a doobie in there and light it up, huh? 
Carl, who had perked up at the sight of the cake, shrinks back down with a frown. Just a, just a small slice, please. Flynn eyes TJ, who's holding out his plate and positions the knife. Smaller, please. Oh my god, loosen up, you're on vacation. Flynn starts cutting the slice even bigger than Carl's was. Hey! Flynn... She says it quietly, but the chill in her voice is clear, and so is the fact that things are completely okay. Flynn grunts and cuts the cake again, this time with a slice that's just an inch wide. Is that good? Yeah, that's fine. Thanks. TJ moves away to sit down, and the warm glow of our little get-together chills, but Leo chips in with a laugh. Make sure, Cha <laughs> Make sure Chase gets a real big chunk. He's getting way too skinny. I don't argue, and Flynn slaps down a large slice on my plate, a little notch in the center where he tried to cut TJ's. I sit in the vacant seat next to Carl where he's resting a cheek in his paw, methodically shoveling the cake in his maw. Everything okay? Oh yeah, yeah, everything's good. I'm about to ask more, but Flynn points across the table at us. Hey Leo, want to tell them about what we saw on the way here? Oh god, no! I look at Leo inquisitively, and even Carl's ears perk up a little bit. What? Leo purses, purses his lips like he's trying to decide whether or not to tell us. Now might not be the best time. Flynn rolls his eyes. Screw it, you know Janice! The waitress? Yeah, the meth the meth head out, out one at the diner. Oh my god, the meth out, okay. Yeah, the meth out one at the diner. Come on, f come on, Flynn. Well, anyway, we were driving up Main Street towards the field. You know, with rusted Bob Wyatt and stuff. TJ's hiding his face with a pause. He stares down hard at his cake. Uh-huh. Well, when we turned around the bend, we saw Janice. He keeps pausing for effect, and it's getting annoying. Okay, what happened? Well, she was all crouched over, staring at the road, and Leo starts driving up to... I thought she was having, like, a heart attack or something. Yeah, well, as we get closer, we see that her pants were down. I recoil a little, not having expected that at all. What? Yeah, and when we pulled up next to her, she just grinned at us, and then... Flynn snorts out a laugh, covering his face like he still can't believe what happened. Can we please not talk about this? It just makes me feel awful. What? Well, uh... She, uh... It's unusual to see Flynn at a loss for words. Well, she just started pissing. Wait, wasn't this scene in Leo's route? I think we get this scene of you. I think I got this scene when I played Leo's route. Maybe? I think? Maybe? I don't know. I kind of forgot. Jeez. Oh, what? Why? I don't know, she just smiled at us and started pissing. Heard it first and looked down and saw it, then Leo hit the gas. Flynn sits back, done with his story, not exactly looking pleased with himself. I furrow my brow in confusion. Janice? She was one of the more well-adjusted people living in this town. Leo lets out a cough into the awkward silence. I'm still trying to figure out what exactly happened. Like, maybe we missed something. Either way, she seemed fine a few days ago. Well, now I have more reason to never go into that diner again. We sit there awkwardly. I notice Carl is still staring down at his empty plate. I still can't figure out why Carl's being so quiet, but I see an opportunity to get him to talk. And change the subject. Hey, didn't we have some weird stuff happen, Carl? Carl looks up at me. Huh? You know, the sounds we were hearing? Oh, yeah. What kind of sounds? Like bumping sounds and voices? That sounds... That sounds creepy. Yeah, and Carl just charged down there like he wasn't even scared. That seems dangerous. Carl finally gives a little smile. <laughs> well, having a hard head can make you act crazy sometimes. So, did you find anything? No, we're not sure what it was. I'd watch out. Sounds like you got a pair of hobos banging out in your basement. As we, Jenna leans over and starts pulling out presents from one of the bags. 
Sorry, Carl, we didn't have time to wrap these up. It's fine. She pulls out a comic book from TJ, a poster from Leo, and a manga from herself. I know you hate these things, but I think you should give it a chance. I'll take a look. Thanks. And then this horn band from Chase. She pulls out an orange and black band from the bag. The colors of my school, Carl's former school. Oh. He seems to be struggling to find something to say. The thanks. I didn't know people still wore these. Leo suddenly shifts against the counter, realizing that he had to explain my present. Oh, jeez. Ah, <sighs> jeez. <laughs> well, well, they're making a comeback. We saw a couple of rams and then a stag that had like five of them on. Carl glances at me, and I can tell he probably knows I didn't get it for him. Mainly because of the university logo, and also because we've made fun of them together a few years ago about how bro -y they were. I don't know if I should feel embarrassed or not, but my cheeks burn anyway. I promised myself to get him something thoughtful the next time we go into Peyton. Yeah, well, here's mine. Flynn reaches into his pocket and pulls out something small hidden in his paw. He hands it to Carl, who looks confused for a second before the expression turns to one of interest. Wow. It's a small metal rectangular box with two sharp points jetting out at the top. I lean in for a closer look and realize those parts are horns, and there's a complex, elegant design of a ram's face etched out on the front of the box. Carl presses the thumb against one of the horns and pushes. The top flicks up and over, and that's when I realize it's a lighter. Saw it when I was over on the reservation. Made me think of you. He reaches out and traces the finger along the horns and clicks it back shut. Thanks, Flynn. Yeah, now you'll look like a badass when you decide to get blazed. Yeah. Oh, sorry. We all jump and look over TJ, who's looking at the floor, his plate going from the table. Flynn starts to laugh, but catches himself. Don't worry about it. They probably got a hundred of these those plates. Carl, where's your broom? He doesn't say anything, and we look at where Carl had been sitting a few seconds before, but he's gone. So is another portion of the cake. Huh? Where'd he go? Hey, check between the wall and the fridge. I think that's where I remember seeing it. TJ gets down his knees and starts picking up the larger pieces. I look back at Carl's spot, then up the stairs. I'll be right back. Bathroom. I'm not sure why the deck is the first place I look, but it's where I find him. I watch him through the paneled curtains for a moment. He's sitting on a little swing set facing out towards the garn glaringly bright desert. There's an empty plate with a fork on it next to him. He's also toying with the lighter Flynn gave him, flipping it open and closed a few times and holding it up to the light. Quietly, I slide open the glass door and step out onto the wooden balcony. The jack is, of course, nice and big, stretching around half the house. I see Carl's long ear twitch at the sound, and he lowers the lighter down to his lap but doesn't turn around. Hey. He does turn around then and smiles. Shit, I thought you were Leo or something. I thought it had been a bad thing. I look around and just decide to sit next to him on the swing. You just have pulled me back to the party. I look over at him. He's looking down at his lighter, turning it over in his paws, the hoof portions of his fingers making clacking sounds against the metal. Those things always fascinated me. It seemed like it should make holding things more difficult, but he managed just fine. Are you okay? Carl huffs out a chuckle and leans his head back against the cushion, backing up his feet. That's a great question. Everyone's always asking me. He just seemed really uptight as all. Carl's demeanor is a lot more relaxed now, obviously. As is to emphasize that thought, he takes another hit off his joint and holds his breath for a moment, then lets it out. The pungent smell envelops me. I just don't like being around so many people. You know that. Well, yeah, but you were fine around them these past few days. Carl rubs his forehead hard with the paw holding the joint using his palm. Yeah, well, things weren't about me then. Just felt a little bit put on the spot. He calls. 
That shit just gets me nervous. Like, can't we just hang out and not make it about me? I don't say anything annoyed again that I just can't grasp what he means. Am I making you nervous? Carl finally does look at me, then his massive horn swing towards me. No, you never do, Chase. I do look away at that point, almost feeling self-conscious at the way he opened up to me. Aww. And thanks for trying to get me to talk earlier. Just makes me feel guilty, though. The way people try and include me in things, and then I just disappoint them. But you just don't really force me into shit. Everyone feels like I need to do something. Why can't I just decide that for myself? I push against the ground, making the swing sway a little, trying to think of the right thing to say. I mean, it's good to do stuff, right? You can't just sit around doing nothing forever. I guess. It's just that I worry enough about it myself. I don't need other people, other people doing it for me. I lean back in the swing for a bit, looking out over the desert. Man, I'm hungry. Wish I'd brought more cake with me. Not enough incentive to go back in? Not yet. I could go get you some. He smirks at me. You one of those fat fetishes just feeding me garbage so my moves get bigger? <laughs> uh, shut the fuck. Shut the hell up, Carl. Oh my gosh. What is wrong? What is wrong with Carl? <laughs> oh, shut up, Carl. I'm here, guys. I'm sorry. I'm just like, I got so much stuff going on. I'm just, I'm just, I can't. I just, some, some stuff makes me laugh my ass off. <sighs> you don't have moves. I've felt them. Yeah, can't keep your paws off me. You ever think for my fat ass? I look him over as if studying his figure. Hmm. Hey! He covers his chest. Well, I do actually like bigger guys, and there's nothing wrong with extra weight, especially if it's carried well. He looks at me ex, ex, expediently. What you do? Sweet, you know? You seem like you'd be a pretty dope boyfriend. Just feed me cake all day and then get off on the results? Oh my god, shut the hell up. Carl, shut up! Oh my god, I can't stand Carl. I'm about to shoot back with something snarky when a stumbling figure catches my eye. Out on the sun-baked asphalt of the road in front of Carl's house, I see a thin figure, a weasel I think, running up the road. He stops, panning, paws on his knees before he looks over his shoulder again. His whole body slumps then like the air's going out of him like he's giving up on something. He turns around to look back up the road. He's far away, but even from here I can tell that he's talking. Carl looks over at my silence, then down at the road where I'm looking. Hmm. Is that... is that Duke? Yeah, that's him. Must be on something. He usually is. Duke finally turns around and starts to cower, his paws up in surrender. His lips are still moving rapidly, reminding me of someone who's trying to say as much as they can before <clears throat> before something cuts them off. What do you think? I trail off as Duke suddenly whips his head around to look up at us, then starts pointing up at our balcony. Uh-oh. Let's hope the doors are locked. Carl's chuckling, obviously finding the whole thing hilarious, but I'm a bit more on edge. I don't really feel like he's high. Duke's movements are a lot more focused and more precise like he's all there. And for some reason, it feels like he's looking directly at me. I furrow my brow, watching as the weasel turns towards us, sticking a foot out to take a step. The sound of the sliding door winching open nearly makes me jump out of my skin. What the hell are you guys doing? Jenna marches around the swing set to stand in front of us, paws on her hips. Whoa, what's up, Jenna? Carl leans back in the swing, elbows over the back, smiling. The fox's eyes narrow as she sees the joint. Did you forget who this party was for? Carl shrugged and rubbed his forehead again. Leo, I'm guessing? No, we spent all day yesterday getting this ready for you. Leo, especially. Now get back downstairs and have your party. Carl sits quietly for a moment and glances at me. No, no, I don't think I will. He's not smiling anymore, his face expressionless, head turned back towards Jenna, 
but his eyes are wandering off towards the side, looking at the sky. Why not? Because I didn't fucking ask for it. I pretend to look at my phone. What, a party? I'm so sorry we were trying to be thoughtful. Carl, maybe we should just forget you next time, huh? Jenna, it's okay. We're just hanging out. She ignores me. I see the skin inside Carl's ears and around his nose turning red. Since he was a kid, kid Carl didn't deal well with conflict, usually running away the first chance he got. No, no, this was for Leo. I just don't understand why we couldn't do something that didn't evolve. Sorry, Carl, but that's life. Sometimes you have to come out of your room. Sometimes you have to be the center of attention, and sometimes, God forbid, you have to talk to people. Well, what if I wanted to stay up here and hide? Who gives a fuck? The look on Jenna's face is approaching contempt. Are you kidding me? This is difficult for you? Jenna. Again, she ignores me. I might as well be talking to a statue. Or maybe I'm the statue that she isn't paying attention to. I feel like something must have happened downstairs. This isn't like her. You never realize how good you have it, Carl. Have you ever had a taste of what I went through? I could practically feel the heat radiating off of Carl's body. He looks down at his lap. Are you blaming me for that? His voice breaks. We all, we all have our problems. Some easier than others. Carl glares at her trying to be angry, but I can tell it's not working. You don't know what kind of shit I have to deal with. Like being rich? No, it's like myself. Oh, how terrible. The one thing you have full control over. No, no, that's so fucking unfair. The quiver in Carl's voice doesn't exactly sound convincing and the pot doesn't seem to be helping as I can see his finger shaking. Just like life. Carl's face is bewildered. What the fuck did I do, Jenna? Did I say something wrong earlier? Out of habit, he lifts the joint to his muzzle with his shaking fingers but then flinches as Jenna steps forward. I guess he thought she was going to slap him or something, but instead she just reaches forward and plucks the joint out from his grasp, right before flicking it back into his face. It hits his nose and Carl flinches again. Without a word, Jenna spins on her heel and opens the door even harder than she did the first time. I'm stunned. I haven't seen Jenna that angry since she was in middle school and definitely never at Carl. Carl doesn't say anything, instead rubbing at his nose, leaning back into the seat. The insides of his ears are still flushed a deep red. What the fuck was that? I... I don't know. Something must have happened. That wasn't Jenna. I'll ask Leo about it. Later. I didn't do anything, did I? I shrug, no words coming to mind. We sit in silence a while, listening to the train horns. Looking down, I see the joint still smoking up from the planks of the floor. Slowly, I lean over and pick it up before holding it out to Carl. He takes it and looks at it for a second. Raising his paw, he pauses, then takes a drag before flicking it off the side of the balcony. He lets his head sag, his big horns dipping towards the floor as he closes his eyes. Slowly, I put my arm around his shoulders. He leans into me and doesn't pull away. Oh my gosh, what the hell was that about? So it's over with Leo, huh? Jenna sucks in final state. Shut up. Jenna's, Jenna's so annoying. I can't stand Jenna. Jenna's like, let me get... Jenna's like, let me get into this... The, let me get into... You know, let me get into this... Pro, uh, let me get into this uh, issue that has nothing to do with me. Because fuck you, Carl. Stop being, a, uh, stop being reclusive and go and join in with your friends. Like, I think Carl should do that. But just coming into him and be like, Carl, what's wrong with you? Is not going to help anybody. Final State's just mad because he has a thing for Jenna. He's like, ooh, he's like, ooh, the female, the only female in the game. I need her. It's okay, Final State. I know you're happy that the female's in the game. <laughs> Carl waves his controller around like it's going to help him avoid my three-spike throw, almost knocking over his beer bottle. It hits him anyway, and he gives a little grunt of annoyance. I grin and consider letting up on him because he's clearly drunk. Well, I will... 
I will be playing Jenna after Carl's route. So whenever I finish this route, then I gotta play Jenna's route, then we'll do Flynn's route, and last, and certainly least, the TJ route. I grin, grin and consider letting up on him because he's clearly drunk. Seems that way. He hasn't really talked to me since, much since I got here. I leave out the part that that's probably my fault. Carl lets out a weird little uh sound as I punch his character as if he were the one getting punched instead. Oh, that sucks. Does it suck? He's looking intently at the screen. Still, I get the feeling he's not paying full attention because it's getting easier and easier to nail his character with my combos. I don't really know yet. It's been three years. Maybe it just hasn't kicked in yet. It takes that long to kick in for you? When Tanya dumped me, I felt like I couldn't get out of bed for a week. Oh, God. I remember that. Back in high school, when we were both 16. Didn't she get you in the pot? Carlos had a sword again as I flip kick his demon character in the chin. Yup, and thank Satan for it. I don't know how else I would have gotten over her. Anyway, not to be dick, but you're better for it. He surprises me with a spin kick that sends my Angel Wolf character flying across the screen. I focus back on the game and I throw a barrage of punches into his demon character's face, sending blood splashing onto the screen. Oh? Well, you know... It's just hard to talk to you and Leo when you guys are being all lovey and shit. His words are mushy, starting to bleed into one another. His character throws a flaming spear at my angel, which I easily deflect with my shimmering shield. I extend my wings and swoop in to throw my lightning bolts. Well, you know, no one really tried to talk to us when we were together. It felt like we were making you guys uncomfortable. I watch his demon fly in the air surrounded by a glowing white circle. Looking over, I see Carl frowning. No, I don't think so. His demon spreads its own much spikier wings and hovers up from the circle. He reaches up into the sky and a red lightning bolt slams down into my character. Guys were just kind of self-absorbed. You didn't call me once after you guys started dating. And here I was thinking Carl never liked conflict. That sentence carried a lot of weight and a lot of years behind it. I'm not about to argue with him though, especially after what happened with Jenna. That lightning bolt was it for my wolf angel, and his demon flies up to the screen and flips us off as winner is displayed. Well, there was college. Carl stretches, leaning back into the giant beanbag chair we're sitting on. I don't remember much of college anymore. He lays back in the chair and looks over at me. By the way, I have a job interview on Friday. My eyes widen. Don't act surprised, asshole. He hangs on to the last word with a lisp. You're drunk, but that's awesome. Where at? A print shop? Be a production assistant. Well, that sounds decent. Yeah, parents told me they'd buy me a car to get there. It's in Peyton, of course. But anyway, Flynn told me he'd give me a ride to the interview. But since you're here... He gives me a lazy, sidelong glance. Well, I usually wouldn't have an issue with it, the thought of how hard I'd been procrastinating my school project started to make my stomach churn. But hey, how often will I get to hang out with Carl when the break is over? I'd love to take you. You know, we were going to go out and do some stuff tomorrow. Why don't we change your look? Get you new clothes or something for your interview. He keeps smiling. Sounds great. So what's it like kissing a dude? Whoa, Carl, where did this come from? Whoa, 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 Carl. Carl, where did this... Carl, where did this come from? Excuse me? Carl? This, this came, that's pretty abrupt to just come out of nowhere. Oh boy. I let out a surprise laugh. <laughs> what? You know, it, is it like more? He wiggles his paws uselessly in the air. I, I don't know. You kissed a girl, right? Um, Samantha, right? I think so, but that was like seventh grade. So was it different? I laugh at him again. Pretty sure it's just like kissing a girl, man. You sure? I feel like kissing different species would be even more different. Maybe. I've, I've always sort of wanted to know what it's like. He says it slowly, deliberately, trying not to trip over his words. Yeah? I say it even slower because I think I know what Carl's getting at. I could see how guys could be sexy. Carl, are you coming out to me? He rolls over onto his stomach, facing me fully now. That's... That's a good question. Maybe we can answer it. I'm a little buzzed, but not drunk. 
Are you asking if you can kiss me? He, oh, Carl. Carl, but Leo. Chase, but Leo. You're going to betray Leo. No, Leo, look away. Leo lovers, look away. He's about to betray them. Look away. Oh, no. He's going to betray him. Oh, traitor. He gazes at me lazily through lidded eyes, looking about ready to fall asleep. Only, only if you want. I had been asked to be the experiment of a few guys in the past in college, and I always say no, but Carl? Oh, we have a choice. Hell yeah, there's no answer to this. Hell yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter he's drunk. It's fine. It's it's different. We're already friends. It's fine. <laughs> if you want. Carl's eyes widen slightly, then he slowly gets to his hands and knees and crawls towards me. There better be a kissing CG. I want a kissing CG right now. Carl's eyes widen slightly, and then he slowly gets to his hands and knees and crawls towards me. I was going to stand up, but it looks like he wants to do this on the beanbag. Uh, I lean back in the bag, sinking into it a bit more. Carl kneels at my feet, looking unsure. Is this right? Uh, yeah, do you want me to st- Before I know it, he's crawled up on top of me. His presence is heavy and warm, and I lean back, feeling myself get hard despite the awkwardness of it all. He looks down at me into my eyes, and I feel myself blush. Oh! This reminds me of something that happened with me. I, I I cannot really talk about it, but let's just say I had a very good time with a friend who was extremely attractive, much more attractive than I thought there would be. And it was just bros, you know, it was just bros and sisters being chill together, you know? And I'm a little upset that, you know, nothing's going to come from it, but it was a good time. And they don't, and the person, you know, who watches this is going to know I'm talking about them, but the rest of you have no idea who the fuck I'm talking about, which is probably for the best. But it was good, and I really liked him, and he was very extremely attractive. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, I'm moving on. He looks down at me and into my eyes, and I feel myself blush. So, sorry, is this okay? Yeah, it's fine. He leans down, pauses, and leans in all the way, and I feel a soft, wide muzzle against mine. At the same time, I feel one of his paws slide behind my head. It's different than kissing Leo or Samantha way back in middle school. Carl's muzzle is big and more blunt, his lips softer and more malleable. It covers the entire front of my muzzle. His beard tickles my neck and cheeks. I expect him to pull back quickly, but he doesn't, keeping his paw behind my head and pressing deeper into the kiss. His other paw holds on to my upper arm. I open my eyes to see that his are closed. He hunches over me closer, and I feel myself start to respond, reaching up to wrap my arms around his broad back. He huffs in response, and then I feel his lips part and his tongue flicks against my lips. I start to open them, but that's when I feel the beanbag shift and Carl slides to the side. So my manages to slip and fall on the wobbly beanbag, his mouth sliding sloppily off mine as he slumps down on top of me. Oh, it's so cute! I should have made this a CG. You know what? Maybe I'll make this a CG for the next for the next time I stream. Oh, oh, it's so cute. Oh, oh, that is so adorable. Oh, they're so cute. Oh, oh, I love stuff like this so much. Why can't we have more romance? Why can't we have more cute romance scenes like this in furry visual novels? There's always sex, sex, sex. What about something like this? Oh, it's so cute. I love it. Oh, I love it so much. I let out a grunt as his weight comes to rest on my chest. He chuckles and I can feel the spasms all the way through my own body. <laughs> Oops. I laugh too, then wait a while, but he doesn't move. Um, Carl, you, you can get off now. He doesn't say anything. I'm about to say something else when I hear a deep snore right next to my ear. Yes, it is. I completely agree with you. That is a giant beanbag. I, I, I was like, I was thinking too. It was like, how do, do both of them fit? And then I see the CG, and I'm like, oh, 
that's like one of them that's like one of them giant like forty dollar bean bags. I'm not sure if you guys ever went to like a Walmart, but like Walmart has like bean bags like these are they're like forty dollars. Like these are like the forty dollar bean bag chairs. These are massive. Also, I love the little glow in the dark sticker stars. Oh, so cute. I love those. So cute. Carl? His response is another girthral snore. I shift under him for the first time, realizing how actually fucking heavy he is. It's not exactly a bad feeling. His presence is enveloping and warm, and the beanbag under me is offering enough cushion so I'm not getting crushed. The snoring isn't bad either. It's almost comforting as his breath tickles the hairs inside my ear. His big belly squishes up against my torso like, like a warm sandbag. My eyes are heavy, and slowly I wrap my arms around his back. I haven't had someone to sleep with in years, and I don't realize how much I miss the feeling. Slowly, the dim lights in Carl's room fade out as I fall asleep to his comforting, rhythmic snores. Oh, that's so sweet. I think there's a good point to stop. Nope. Oh, that's Teach. Nope, nope. I'm gonna. S or should I pass the scene real quick? Alright, fine. Fine, guys. We'll, we'll, I'll do this scene real quick. I don't know how to make a kid voice. Is this. Oh, this is TJ. Why is. Why does he look. Why is the art so different? Is this when they were children? Is this a flashback? I'm, I'm guessing this is a flashback? Stop! I heave for breath as I chase TJ down the dusty street, trying not to pop the water balloon that I'm holding in my claws. You always chase. You always chase me! TJ's whining again, but I don't care. He's always the funniest one to hit. His crazy speed made it all the more rewarding. Even though he's a grade lower, he could outrun me easily. I could still keep up with him, though, since he's running around houses and mailboxes. My fourth grade brain is easily able to figure out ways to cut him off. It's not long before I have him backed up against the back of the Ben Lee's trailer home. He does a stupid dance where he's running back and forth, covering his head. Stop! I stick my tongue out the side of my muzzle, following him back and forth with the balloon I have cocked behind my head. Hold still! No! He finally curled up into a ball against the house, crouching in the dirt in his blue swim trunks. It does! It looks cute. I stop. Oh, it's not fun if you're not going to try to run. He looks up at me between his fingers. You always throw it too hard. Well, if you... He suddenly darts to the right, but I'm ready, hurling the balloon right at his back. It doesn't explode, though. Instead, smacking against the spotted back of a wet splat. Ow! He skids to a stop, then immediately bends down, scoops up the balloon, grinning at how the tables had turned. Uh-oh. I start jogging back with a TJ he's back with the balloon, but I don't have anything to worry about. In his excitement, he grips the ball too hard, and I can see how his claws dimple the rubber before it explodes mid-throw. What a shower as his head and dust kicks up as dark spots speckle the ground, just like his fur, I think. He gasps the way cats do whenever they get any water on them, and I point and laugh. I can tell he's deciding whether or not to sulk and cry, and I hold my breath because I don't want the game to end. I think I win him over because he smiles and starts to laugh, too. That always happens to me. Well, don't hold it so hard. I wasn't. Yeah, you were. I saw. I see TJ's ears perk up, and he looks over towards the front of the house. What? But that's when I hear it, too. Doing with those water balloons. Don't don't touch me. I'm not touching you. Just give me the fucking balloons. Clint and Jeremy. Carl must have followed us and they saw him out the window. My guts drop to my feet and I feel like I'm going to pee myself. TJ covers his mouth and I see tears starting to brim in his eyes. I think fast. Go run and get Leo. He can help. Before I know it, TJ's tearing across the backyards of the houses, up the block where Leo's filling water balloons. At least that's where I hope he's going. Slowly, I pad around the house, peeking around the corner to the front yard. Carl's standing with his fists clutched, staring. Why does Carl wait? Why does Carl have a? Why does Carl have a weird hoodie like that? That's those, Carl has a hot topic hoodie on. Is that a hot topic hoodie? Interesting.
Anyway. <clears throat> Carl's standing with his fists clenched, staring hard, trying to look defiant, but I can tell he's terrified. Multicolored water balloons are scattered around his hooves. He must have been carrying them all in his white tank top. He always wore a shirt when we did water games. What's the matter, cunt face? We're not gonna hurt ya. Heh, <laughs> right. Jeremy laughs stupidly at Clint and bends down to pick up a purple water balloon. Clint starts circling around Carl and the ram follows him with his muzzle, nostrils flaring. As he's looking the other way, Jeremy throws the water balloon right in Carl's face. Following the smack of rubber on muzzle, the balloon explodes, showering all three of them in water. Carl whimpers and covers his face. I crept the side of the house knowing I should do something, but my legs aren't moving. Leave me alone! Carl's doing a good job of not crying, but he's about to. Hey, we're just playing! Clint leans down to pick up another water balloon. That's when Carl makes a break for it, dodging around the bent over Clint towards the street. Clint's too fast though, and the ring-tailed cat instantly reaches out and catches Carl by one of his horns. He rides him for a second, jumping on Carl's back before using his long tail to trip the ram up. Carl lands on his stomach with a loud groan as Clint sits on his back, holding onto his horn. Cut! Cut! He stepped on my tail! Clint grabbed both of Carl's horns and leans back so far, I think I can hear his spine cracking. Carl screams in pain and reaches for his horns. With his face pointed at the sky, I can see the tears rolling down his face now. The one eye I can see is open wide, and I think he sees me, but still, my legs won't move. Hey! Leo jogged up the street, looking right at Clint. I want to see what Leo. I want to see what Leo looks like as a kid. The ringtail sneers, but drops Carl back to the ground and stands up as Leo gets closer. The fuck do you want, Bina? Clint's weary, his casual demeanor more tense now that Leo's here. I sigh with relief. Carl sits up and quickly rubs his face before standing and running back up the street, his hooves clopping loudly all the way. Oh, look at, look at Kid Leo. He, aw. Probably not the best scene to be saying all to, because this is a pretty interesting scene. <laughs> Leo doesn't even look at him, his eyes on Clint. I said, what do you want? You no understand? Honestly, Leo might not have understood. He'd only been here less than a year. Still, Leo doesn't say anything, his jaw working, and I wonder if he's imagining chewing on Clint's neck. You're fucking crazy. Let's go, Jeremy. Clint is afraid of Leo, and he's le left us alone ever since the wolf had moved in, at least for the most part. Even though they're both 13, Leo was a head taller and almost twice as wide. Leave them, al leave them alone. Clint stops. What? Leave them alone forever. Clint looks hesitant, obviously not wanting to stay, but unable to leave now that Leo has thrown out a challenge, not in front of Jeremy. Oh, what? Or, he thinks for a second, is not good for you, painful. I hadn't been paying attention to Jeremy, but I see a sudden movement from behind Leo, followed by another smack and a splash. Wait, is Leo an immigrant? Oh, can Leo not speak good? Can... Can he not speak proper English? At least when he was a kid? Oh, I didn't... See, this shows you how long it's been. Did they mention that? Is he from... Is he actually from Mexi Me Mexico? And I'm not... I promise you, I'm not trying to be... Um, I'm not trying to be offensive. Is he from Mexico? I know he mentioned he's like a Mexican something, but I was like... I thought that was his animal species, but is he actually Mexican? Huh. See, I learn something new every day. I hadn't been paying attention to Jeremy, but I see us... Oh, he is from he's 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 from Mexican final state. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah, he's from Mexico. He's what you mean Mexico? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, that's <laughs> no, it's fine, Fonzie. I knew what you meant. I'm just teasing. That's interesting. Okay, I didn't know that. Maybe they mentioned it. I forgot. Okay. Oh, cause like the way he was like, oh, he like when he was talking, I was like, he's not talking like proper English. Hmm. Leo arches his back. My phone says what it, your phone says what it wants. That's funny. Oh my gosh. That's funny. Leo arches his back, kissing at the pain from how hard Jeremy had thrown it. The wolf whirls around, one paw rubbing at his back as he snarls at Jeremy, who points and laughs. 
Ha <laughs> ha, what back? He doesn't see Clint running out at him from behind. Leo, Leo. I yelp out his name and he does turn around only to catch a sucker punch right in the stomach. I can hear the thud along with all the air going. I can hear the thud along with all the air going out of him all the way from here. Leo stumbles back and stops with his paws on his knees, gasping. I went to cover my eyes, only to pull them back down immediately and see Jeremy leaping on Leo from behind and biting his ear. Leo screams in pain, but immediately twists and slams his knee into Jeremy's crotch. Jeremy lets go and lets out his own scream, which Leo puts an end to when he grabs the fox and swings him around by the shirt. Jeremy's forward momentum is brought to a halt as he slams headfirst into the oak tree. He goes down. Clint's scared, his eyes wide as he looks from Leo to Jeremy to the front door. Leo doesn't give him a chance, though, running forward and hitting him with a tackle that slams them both to the ground. I think I hear Clint start to beg, but Leo's fists start raining down in his face. Now all I can hear a crunchy, flushy thuds as punch after punch hits Clint's face. Oh, God. And I can hear Leo, too. Oh, I don't know what this means! Keres... Hela no mi jaros. Oh, no, 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 I gotta look. I gotta read what that means. No, 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 I gotta read what that means. Shit, hold on, guys. Guys, hold on. I gotta. I'm gonna. I don't. I wish I could. Sorry, I know I'm interrupting the stream, but I kind of want to know what he's saying because I'm one of those people. It's like, I played Resident Evil 4, like, like, a year ago, and for once, I was like, what are they saying? And then I was like, oh, this is what they're saying. Hold on. Kiris. Hold on, I gotta type it in. Kiris. How do you say it? Kiris. Damn it. Kiris. P. Pela. No me yodos. It's gonna be something like really fucked up. No, I wanna Spanish to English translate. Ooh. Well no me yados means don't fuck with me. Ooh. So Okay, and then what does Keres Pela mean? I'm sorry, I'm trying. So he said don't. Because, you know, I don't care. You know, this is a fun. And then Pelar means Keres Pelar. Oh, do you want to fight? Don't fuck. Oh, oh my god. Oh, he's like, he was pretty much like, oh, he's like, you want to fight? Oh. The sounds Clint makes go from snarling to screaming to gurgling. I cover my ears because the sounds so terrible. Damn. Okay. I had a feeling I've meant something really bad. But again, I feel like I should stop this. Leo looks like he's in a trance of how focused he is on hurting Clint. But again, I'm too terrified. I run in the direction Carl went. I need to tell him I'm sorry that I should have helped him somehow. But I was so scared. Even though this road doesn't lead to his house, I somehow get there. The sky is red and orange even though it was noon just a few minutes ago. For some reason, Carl's house is bigger, much bigger than it should have been. The architecture is pointy or different. I walk around it slowly looking for Carl. Looking down, I see hoof prints. They're too big to be Carl's, but I follow them anyway. They lead around the back of the house right up to a wooden set of cell cellar doors. I reach out to them even though I feel something terrible welling up inside my stomach. I pull on them, but they're stuck as if welded shut somehow. A window oh, next to the doors draws my attention. And I get down on my knees and on my stomach as I look intently through the window. There are little clear spots on the glass, little paw prints breaking through a layer of old dust. The paw prints of children. The room is almost pitch black, but the red light behind me illuminates some of the cement ground through the windows. I don't know where I am at first with open my eyes, but the dimmed Lucha Lobo lamp tells me. Laying there for a while, I realize that Carl's no longer on top of me. My face feels a little wet and my nose is stuffy. I look around thinking that Carl probably went back to his bed, but he's not there either. 
Must be getting a drink or something. A dull far of thud makes me open my eyes again. I listen carefully, starting to worry that the sound came from downstairs. Again, I hear it, and it makes me jump this time. Shit, is it happening again? I hear... What do you mean you should have read this again? I hear... What? From... I hear a voice coming from... Well, well final state, you can listen to me. You can, you can, you know, read it while I read it. Because, you know, you can support my channel. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't want to be that. I'm not trying. To, I'm not trying to be that kind of person. I'm not trying to be, you know, like, like follow my channel, even if you don't want to. No, I'm messing around. I hear a voice coming from the same area directly below me. It's a lot more muffled, but I can still tell it's a voice muttering and cursing. Carl? My voice sounds weak and warbly in the heavy silence of the dark house. The scuffling sounds below me stop for a second, though, and start up again more vigorous now. Slowly, I sit up listening to the whispering and thumping beneath me. My mind flashes to Duke, the weasel's foot forward, his eyes locked on me. I know, I'm sorry. Finally, the anxiety gets to me and I stand up, walking as quietly as I can from the room into the hallway. I'm gonna stop here. I'm gonna screw with you guys so... Wait, no, no, I'm gonna keep going. I'm joking. The kitchen is dark and I move over to the front door to check and see if it's locked. It is, so I move over to the stairs and look down to the inky blackness, almost afraid to turn on the lights. Nothing jumps out at me when I do, but the light is actually making me more afraid, knowing that it will light up anything that's down there. I move down the stairs as quietly as I can, every creak making my fur bristle. The scraping sound is louder now, and so is the voice. I'm almost positive that's Carl's, but I can't be sure. I call out his name again. It's almost a whisper in my throat. I clasp my paws together against my chest, eyes flicking to each doorway as I slowly move down the hall, not wanting Carl to get to jump on me. When I finally get to the crawl space door, I can pick up an, a rhythmic thumping along with the scrapes and the muttering is much clearer now. Buried inside. Help. I shiver. Carl, this isn't funny. Again, my voice is weak and unconvincing. He probably didn't even hear me. Another thump almost shakes the house and I jump. What the hell is he doing? Is it even Carl? Did whoever is down there murder him and is now in the process of burying his body? The fear is too much, and I know I have to open the door now and put an end to this stupid prank, or I'm going to call 911 and make everything worse. With each step I take towards the door, it feels like the air gets more electrified, the charge making my fur stand on end all over my body. As soon as I touch the tiny knob to the door and start to pull it open, though, the sound stops. I freeze, listening hard. I get the feeling that whatever is down there is doing the exact same thing. Then they hear a series of thuds as whatever it is runs at the door. I fall back and can't help myself. I fall back and I can't help myself from shrieking, landing on my ass and scooting backwards with my paws and feet. The door flies open and I'm face to face with a dusty Carl. Carl, what the fuck? I scream at him, my chest heaving as I clutch it like I'm about to have a heart attack. He looks confused, looking around the back at me, breathing hard himself. Just, uh, I, I was just... I wait, but he doesn't say anything. There's white dust all over his horns and on his shoulders. Just what? I yell at him again, and he jumps. I'd feel bad if I wasn't so freaked out. I sleepwalk sometimes, okay? I debate whether or not to accept that as an answer, but he looks confused enough that it just might be true. You scared the shit out of me. Carl moves out of the crawl space, leaning over to brush his head off. You scared the shit out of me. I didn't know where I was. I slowly get to my feet, still breathing heavily. What is that stuff? What were you doing in there? Just dust. It's dirty down there. Again, I feel like he's leaving stuff out. I try to look past him into the crawl space, but he closes the door. Come on, I need a smoke after that. I stand back to let him pass, tempted to open the door again. He grabs my arm when he sees me looking, though. Seriously, dude, let's go. I don't really want to be alone in this house right now. Please? I look at him, and I can tell he's definitely freaked out. I would be, too, if I woke up in that crawl space. Yeah, let's go. Slowly, I follow him, looking back at the door before flicking off the light. What the hell? Thursday. Oh... The horror's starting to come. We're starting to get some. Ooh. 
All right, we're gonna stop here. I well, I'm gonna stop here. Ooh. All right, guys. Well, I know this was a bit dark, but um, started getting a little dark. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Uh, I'm really happy to get back into the Echoverse. Once again, I would like to say, if you really enjoy my content, feel free to like and comment on this video. Uh, tell me what you think about Carl so far, and uh, what do you think is going to happen next? Uh, no spoilers, though. And lastly, they, uh, ugh, I can't speak. Once again, uh, like I said, thank you for stopping by. I will try to stream this. I was trying, ugh. I will try to stream another part of this next week. Uh, for the remainder of this week, though, I will probably be trying to throw up another familiar travels video if I can. No, Mass Effect. I'll be trying to throw up a Mass Effect video by, uh, this week. But with that being said, though, thanks for stopping by. And this has been Fallen Wolf. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.